How's it guys, Manash here and today we have an Abyss Mordor solo with Human Torch. So Human Torch works really well on all the Mystic Champs in Abyss. Well, except for Hood because you need immunity there. But looking at the rest of them, Mordor's actually one of the hardest ones to solo. Even though he only has about 2.6 million health instead of the 5.8 million. And that's just because of one ability, one extremely annoying ability in this fight. I think you know what I'm talking about. Usually it's not a problem when you're fighting Mordor in general, but in Abyss all champs have a 1% chance to evade, which might not seem like much but it can really mess you up, especially against Mordor because his evade is always an astral evade. So when he evades he applies a degen and then combos you. And that's what makes this fight so difficult to solo with Human Torch. You kind of need a bit of luck just in terms of evade RNG, but I'm gonna give you a strategy that you can use to sort of lower the chance of him evading. While it doesn't really lower the chance, it just gives him less opportunities to evade. So the fight's been going on for over 30 seconds, but he still has about 98% health. And that's because I'm playing it very slow at this stage. Because the strategy basically is to build up a lot of smolders first before you start really doing some damage. Because you don't want to do a lot of hits early in the fight. In fact, I'm only hitting him because of the skirmish charges, so I don't lose too many hits. So you actually want him to hit your block more than you want to hit him. And you don't just want to parry him because that'll leave him stunned first of all, then you can't hit him without getting evaded unless you use a special attack. So that parry stun does nothing for you. It just takes up your time while he waits for the next power gain. So that's why it's better to take full blocked hits. And you can also take multiple hits from one combo on the block if you don't parry, which means more smolders. Then I just wait for a heavy attack or a combo ender to punish and then reset that brute force mechanic. And the block damage isn't that bad. I am using a rank 3 torch but I finished this fight with about 50% health and of course I'm not boosted. But still I would recommend running willpower for this fight. Level 1 is perfectly fine, that's what I always use. Level 3 is even better. His abyssal ability will apply a fate seal debuff on you after you dex 10 times. So willpower will help recover a bit of health from block damage and if he does actually evade you. Then in terms of dealing with these power gain, you just need to be aware of it, you know, keep an eye on the timer. And just try to bait the special one as soon as you can. If he doesn't want to throw it and gets the power gain, you just want to rush up to him and then drop that heavy attack. Sometimes he only dodges the first hit so the second one connects. If you can't get in the heavy attack, then you're just gonna have to be patient and bait the special too. You might lose a couple of hits, but it's really not that bad because you can do this fight very comfortably in less than 200 hits. But ideally, you also want to play in a way which will allow you to hit him whenever he triggers the power gain. And that's why I sometimes drop combos early in the fight, just to disable the power gain. So I'll hold block and wait for the heavy attack or the second medium, while keeping an eye on the power gain, because if it's about to trigger then I'll drop a combo, instead of just dropping that one medium attack. But it's usually just a shortened combo, like 2 or 3 hits. You can also use the special 3 to disable the power gain. I know some people who like to save it just for that purpose. Usually I just use it whenever I can and his power is low. But sometimes I will wait a bit if the power gain is about to trigger, just so I can disable it easily. Also keep in mind that if you throw a special attack soon before the power gain triggers, then there is a chance that he won't actually be passive after that, he'll just carry on hitting you like normal. I'm not sure that's intended but that's how it works sometimes. That's often the reason why you'll sometimes get hit when he has the power gain. So yeah, that's basically the strategy. The main thing is you want to play it very slow or passively for about the first half of the fight. So until you run out of skirmish charges. And at that stage you should have at least 80 smolders. I had 95 at that stage and he was just below 50% health. But that was over 6 minutes into the fight and the fight lasted about 7 minutes long. So the second part of the fight, you know, the second half of his health pool just melts away so quickly it's actually ridiculous because of all those smolders. So I took out about 45% of his health, about 1.2 million health in less than 50 hits. And I did that in about 75 seconds, which is some pretty impressive damage per second. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention that when you run out of skirmish charges and then they become warfare charges, the opponent gains plus 100% ability accuracy, which means they'll have a 2% chance to actually evade instead of the usual 1%. So doing the second half of the fight in less than 50 hits means that he had a slightly less than 1% chance of evading in the second half of that fight, uh, statistically speaking. 
I mean, he can still evade the very first hit that you throw at him um, if you get extremely unlucky, but usually in 50 hits with a 2% chance, he should evade once. So I was quite happy to finally get a solo on this fight because Moro is the one champ, besides the collector, that you fight on every path. And it's not really a fight that you worry about or stress for, but that astral evade just makes it so much more annoying than many other fights. Like, I remember when I fought him on path 5, I actually stopped using Torch because the evade was just annoying me so much that I switched to Stealth Spidey just to counter it. He can also solo this fight, but it takes much longer than Torch. And you might not even want to bring him. Or you might not have space to bring him. So now we are almost 6 minutes in and we are getting close to running out of skirmish charges. So this is where the fight really starts to pick up, so you're gonna see some very impressive damage over time here. After I drop the next special 3, I'm gonna start playing a lot more aggressively and then Mordor is just gonna melt away. But yeah, that's all I have to say for this one, I hope you guys found it useful. Thank you for watching, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you soon.